Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy here with the next video in our short series on interpreting Renaissance fencing diagrams with our usual focus on De Grassi's work of 1570. Um, today's subject is a tactical diagram, uh, this one, um, which as usual looks a little bit mysterious to start with, but I'll go through it step by step and try to explain what De Grassi is showing with his image. And then later in the video, I'll talk about some interesting implications of the diagram. Let's begin, however, with the description. So, um, first thing to say is we can see two fencers in the diagram, of course. The fencer on the left, who's just standing there uh, in the low ward position, is a target, plain and simple. So, um, this fencer is not really relevant to what the diagram is showing us. The fencer on the right is the active one uh, and the one that we're going to focus on. So this fencer um, is actually at the point where they're ready to launch an attack against the opponent with their sword like so. Uh, so the fencer has two options. They can launch a cut or they can launch a thrust. If they want to launch a cut, then the blade needs to move along an arc like this, um, which is represented by uh, the, the curve A to B on the diagram. Um, so A represents uh, this portion of the blade, approximately, and, and B is a kind of arbitrary uh, impact point on the target. Okay. So a fencer has a sword up here uh, and the cut goes from A in this position to B at the point of impact. So that's what the, the arc, what the little curved line shows. Um, the other choice which is available to the fencer is of course a thrust, um, which requires the tip of the sword to be used. The tip of the sword begins at point C. So now we're, we're out here at the end of the blade. Um, so in order to make a thrust from this position, we need to pull the blade down to aim it at the target, to aim the tip at the target. So the tip of the sword moves from C in a straight line down to D, and then at this point can be pushed to the target where it impacts at point E, which would be something like that. Okay, so C to D, to E. Um, so what's the purpose of this diagram? What makes it a tactical diagram? Um, it's actually attached to a section of the book which has uh, a title, something like, on when it is better to attack with a cut. Um, so the idea here is that in this particular situation, the cut is the preferred attack. Um, and that's because the distance the blade moves to strike the target is much shorter in the cut than it is in the thrust in this situation. Um, the attack can also be resolved in a single tempo, which is to say a single movement or action of the blade. The thrust, on the other hand, has two tempi, two movements. Um, we've got a kind of realignment of the blade first and then the attack being launched. So this makes for a much longer path of the blade um, before the target is struck. Um, so the cut is a more efficient way to attack in this case because it takes less time. The blade travels along a much shorter path. Um, also, the, the two movements of the thrust from here technically give the opponent uh, a chance to intervene in the middle at, at the junction of the two movements, which is obviously tactically disadvantageous for the attacking fencer here. Um, okay, so wh why do we even need this diagram? Well, it, it basically supports the idea that uh, the thrust is, in fact, the principal attack um, in this style of Italian fencing, and obviously, particularly when you're using a rapier to fence with. Um, so the, the fencers who are training this system 
would always be looking to thrust. So the diagram is included to show firstly that cuts are possible and secondly that there's a very specific tactical situation when the cut is the right thing to do. Okay, And that is when your sword blade and particularly your sword tip has become displaced from the, the direct line to the target for some reason, perhaps as a result of a beat uh, displacing the blade, or perhaps um, you've had to make some kind of parry and the blade has gone wide and high, for example. Um, so that's the reason this diagram is included in the book. Um, but I think there are a couple of interesting things we can extract from it, which are maybe not obvious at first. Um, the, the first point is uh, that little arc um, A to B, uh, it actually shows us specifically the, the part of the blade that we should be aiming to cut with, which is here, okay, it's point A. Now that's important because um, we shouldn't be aiming to just clip the edge of the target with the tip of the sword. Um, now that's something that you find in uh, sports fencing, particularly in uh, the discipline of sabre, uh, for example, in the Olympics, um, you know, catching the opponent just with uh, a little tap with the, the tip of the sword is enough to count as a point. Now that's fine for a sports activity, but we are trying to think about uh, the real martial application of swordsmanship um, in actual fights with sharp weapons. Clipping with the tip is not enough. You need to hit with the right part of the blade um, that imbues the blow with sufficient uh, power and sufficient impact and also leaves a proportion of the blade there available for the draw for the slice action. And that's how you inflict significant damage on the opponent. We're not just clipping them, we're properly cutting them. Um, the second thing that we can possibly extract from the diagram um, is the idea that uh, the hand is high here uh, at the start of the cutting position. And um, that high hand position is implied in uh, the description of cuts in the actual text part of the book. Um, so if you want to deliver a sufficient blow you need to raise your hand uh, before you throw the blow. Um, so there are a couple of nice clues here about how to deliver a, a martially effective cut. Um, we need to raise the hand, the blade needs to travel along this arc, and we need to strike with this part of the edge here, point A in our diagram. Um, so yeah, uh, that is the tactical diagram showing when it is better to strike with a cut. Um, obviously, the key tactical doctrine of the system is to keep your point online most of the time and thrust whenever possible, which is in fact what the target fencer, the fencer on the left, is presumably waiting to do. They're in low ward with their tip on line and you can see without the need for a line in the diagram that any thrust they launch would be a very direct uh, and very short action to strike the target. Right, that's all I'm going to say about this diagram today. Uh, as always, I hope you found it interesting and useful. Um, I shall return shortly with another video. Until then, take care everyone. See you next time.